Flabby whale fishes are known as the female-only fishes. Sounds weird, but not that outrageous, right? Some animal species are indeed female-only after all. For the flabby whale fishes, that is also correct. They are all female. Well, not really. Actually, yeah, they technically are. Okay, that might be confusing. So, let me brought up the question. What exactly is flabby whale fish? Flabby whale fishes are fishes in the familia Ketomimidae. Ketos means whale, and mimus or mimos basically means mimic. Whale mimic, resembling a whale, because they look like a whale. Well, that's the idea at least. Some of us might not agree, but they do have a huge horizontal mouth, tiny eyes, no pelvic fins, no scales, and some could argue that the body somewhat resembles a whale. This family was described back in 1895, with multiple genera. As I've said, all specimens were females. Not only that, what's interesting is, we've found over 600 specimens of whale fishes from the deep sea, which is 1,000 meters depth and deeper. Yet, we didn't find a single juvenile specimen. All are adults, which is kind of fascinating. On a definitely unrelated topic, there was a new order of fish described in 1956, which was the Miripinati. Mirus means amazing and pina means thorn, which is also the word used for fin. So it basically means amazing fin. This order had one family, which is Familia Mirapinidae. Same etymology, of course. There are several species. One is called hairy fish because it has hair like outgrowths on its body. The others are called tape tails, because the skin of their caudal fin is prolonged and extends like a tape. In general, they have large mouths that orient upwards, no scales, but they have amazing pelvic fins with long rays, hence the name. We found around 120 specimens and basically all of them are found in relatively shallow water, that is less than 200 meters depth. All of those were also immature. How do we know they were immature? Well, they don't have a fully developed reproductive organs, that's why. Yet another definitely unrelated topic, in 1966, the big-nosed fishes was described, an entirely new family, Megalomycteridae. Megalos means big and mycter means nose, so literally big nose. These fishes have huge nasal organs, hence the name, small horizontal mouth with immobile upper jaw, no pelvic fins, but they do have scales. We found 65 specimens. Most of them are from below 1,000 meters. And all of them are males. Fascinating, right? Three unique families. One is all juveniles, one is all adult females, and one is all adult males. I mean, it's probably obvious by now since why would I even talk about unrelated fishes in a video called Flabby Whale Fish? But let's talk about the revelation anyway. But before that, During the 1970s, some authors suggested that these three families could be related. The three families were classified in the Ordo Stephanobericiformes, which is also an interesting order of fishes, by the way. Still, there were no definitive evidence to the suggestion. That is until 2003, where it is found that the mitochondrial genome of a mirapinid specimen is basically identical to that of a whalefish specimen with only 0.042% difference. Some were confused, because, to put it simply, it's morphologically too different. So that discovery was a mystery. That is, until 2009, the real revelation was published. A specimen was found in a transitional condition between mirapinid to a ketomimid, which means that is most definitely a larva metamorphosing into an adult. A genetic analysis focusing on these three supposed families were also done, and it shows that all of these are basically the same species. The blue star means megalomycterid, while the red star is mirapinid, by the way. So yeah, if it's not obvious enough, tape tails are just juvenile flabby whale fish, while big nose fish is just male flabby whale fish, while the flabby whale fish itself is the female. 
the three families are then merged into the Ketomimide family by the principle of priority, which states the valid name shall be the oldest available one. You know, because Ketomimide was described earlier than the rest, so it is the valid name. In this video, I specifically talk about the flabby whale fish, and most of the time, when people talk about whale fish, that's what they meant. Still, there are other families of whale fishes. There is Barbaricidae family, the velvet whale fish, which have a body covered in tiny spicules. The other one is Rondeletidae, the red mouth whale fish, which is unique because they have an organ called Tominaga's organ in front of their eyes. These three families are classified in the order Ketomimiformes. Even among the Ketomimids, there are several genera with unique traits, like this one for example. This is Rampocatichthys, the bird snouted whalefish. You could probably guess why they are named that way. So, let's talk about what we know about their lifestyle. Juveniles live in relatively shallow water. They actively feed on copepods. Older juveniles often have a swollen gut filled with copepods. Towards adulthood, they move to the twilight zone, way deeper under. After metamorphosing into adulthood, males lose their esophagus and stomach, and as I've briefly mentioned before, their mouth is practically immobile and useless for eating. Intuitively, they don't eat. Well, they cannot eat, to be precise. Still, they still retain a thin-walled intestine. This intestine is filled with copepod's remains. Even though they don't eat, the remains of copepods in this intestine provide the nutrition. This, of course, won't be sustainable for a long time. That's why the male is thought to not have a long lifespan. They probably exist just to search for females and mate. Meanwhile, females live freely like a typical fish. They can swim slowly by undulating their fins like this, and they can also swim rapidly like this. They have a large mouth and enlarged guts so they can eat large spray. They have reddish color because red is a low energy spectrum that can penetrate far in the deep sea. That way, they aren't visible from far away in their natural habitat. Well, this case of sexual dimorphism and ontogenetic transformation is extreme among the vertebrates. Some deep sea fishes actually exhibit similar case. The most famous example would be deep sea angler fishes which I've talked about in my previous video. The somewhat famous telescope fish also exhibit ontogenetic transformation. But still, as with other deep sea creatures, we don't really know much about their biology. That's why information on their lifestyle is limited. Who knows what we'll discover next about their lifestyle? And who knows, maybe we'll find out that other creatures also exhibit this extreme case of heteromorphisms. For now, Let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, remember I said that we have many specimens of them? We still don't have the exact match of which larvae and males belong to which whale fish. That can be a fun thing to do, don't you think? Anyway, enjoy your day.